I think that the fact that we came to invent and accept quantum mechanics as quickly as we did is one of the most impressive intellectual accomplishments in the entire history of the human race because every idea that was part of quantum mechanics just seemed to violate some cherished notion that we had really clung to. You know, we had this paradigm handed down by Galileo and Newton and their friends, and that was how physics was done, and it was a matter of which version of that physics we should accept. And quantum mechanics comes along and just changes all of the rules. I think a, a useful way of doing it is to have a, a kind of concrete example in mind. And the example I'm going to give you is just a very simple thing of, of a dart being thrown at a dart board. Not because the visualization that we're going to give you is spot on accurate. For that, you really need the mathematical formalism. But I think it's good to have just a mental mnemonic of the ideas just to try to keep them straight. So the example that I'm going to use, if I, if I have my handy dart here, yeah, actually, can we bring the iMag up for this guy? Yeah, good. Yeah, bring it up here. Can you get that? Good. All right, so I'm going to take this guy, right? I'm going to throw this guy, right? And there he goes. So, so classically, right, so that is what, that, that is what Isaac Newton says what happened, right? You simply throw the dart. God, you're good. Uh, good, right? Yeah, right, right. Bullseye every he time. He has help. Right. So, so that's what Isaac Newton would say. That's what our intuition says. The dart simply flies through space and hits the dart board. Okay. Now, the approach to quantum mechanics that came down to us describes this in a somewhat different way. So if we can go to the standard quantum mechanical version of this guy over here, if you can bring that up. So here's the dart. It turns into this probability wave. The wave spikes, collapses at the location where the dart lands. And that is the description in the very standard Copenhagen approach to quantum mechanics. And the issue that we have is this notion of the wave spiking, the wave collapsing. There's no equation that Bohr gives us to this. And therefore, this is something that we don't really understand as a mathematical formalism. We want to go further and have something that really relies on a quantitative description of what's going on. So the first approach that we are going to take a look at, the de Broglie-Bohm approach. According to the Bohmian point of view, or de Broglie's point of view, you have an actual particle which has a position. And the wave is not so much fundamentally a probability wave, but what has often been called the guiding wave. The wave is relevant to the motion of the particle in a very precise way. So, the many worlds approach to quantum mechanics, a completely different solution to this measurement issue that brings up a whole lot of other fantastically interesting ideas. So, many worlds is the following. You have a state, a quantum state of the universe, a wave function. It obeys an equation. Now stop talking. <laughs> Just shush. That's it. That's what the many world says. That's the entirety of what we call the Everett formulation of quantum mechanics after Hugh Everett, who invented it. So for a picture of that, we might imagine that the dart now is going towards the dart board. And what happens is, in some sense, it lands in all of these different locations. And in this approach, there's no collapsing to one outcome. All of the possibilities actually occur. All right, so we are now <laughs> to our final candidate, cubism. So this fourth approach is the dart is going, and the idea is if we're not looking, if we're not actually yet doing the observation, there's, there's nothing really we can say until the observer looks. And so there, if we bring our, our observers, Rudiger takes a look, and then you look and you take in the observation, you update your understanding of the world based on your observation. Is that sort of uh, roughly capturing what you were saying? Well, um, well I, I told... I told you got a guy in Times Square to do that. I thought, I thought he did a pretty good likeness. Uh, not bad, right? <laughs> yes, I mean, guys, you know, apart like, from that... It's like 10 bucks, you can do it. Anyway, go ahead. Well, you see, all... <laughs> um, when we do science, what are we doing? We're making predictions, and um, we, um, we, we test these predictions in experiments. So this is really what cubism talks about. The part about your approach, which I find quite compelling, 
is looking squarely at probability and trying to use a better understanding of it to give us a better understanding of how it applies to quantum mechanics. So whether or not the particular approach that you've come up with is the right one or not, we don't know, of course, but I'm going to give it a thumbs up as an approach that I think really is worthy of further development.